Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue with the drawing of my wife and I uh, on our 25th wedding anniversary cruise, which was six years ago. And I'm only now, of course, getting around to drawing it because I just started drawing two and a half years ago. So uh, down to the hands left, and I will share with you uh, what I'm doing as I continue to finish up this drawing. Well, to get started, I'm just using a 2H pencil just to lightly uh, uh, give the hand some foundation. I normally do start off with something light um, because, you know, there's very few things in a drawing that is going to require the complete whiteness of the paper. And my hand is one of those things that will not be the color of paper. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of foundation here. And uh, for those of you who are ladies, you understand foundation. It's, you know, it's what you start off with, no doubt, uh, before you start to put the layers on. And uh, that's what I just basically do um, pretty much most of the time is just get something on the paper uh, to get started. Now I'm just going to go through uh, my whole hand here and I'm just going to shade it very lightly uh, kind of moving the pencil around in little small ovals and um, give it some base and then we'll move on to uh, blending so I'm going to go right to that point right now now here I've filled up the whole hand with uh, my base tone using the, the 2H pencil and now I'm going to uh, I'm going to use this B pencil here to kind of add in a little bit more darkness to some parts of the hand. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put up the reference photo so that you can look at that at the same time that I'm uh, drawing. And as I just lay down some of this uh, dark area that you can see in the reference photo um, right here that uh, I'm just gonna put that in first before I start my initial blending, but there'll be more adding and blending and adding and blending as we go. So uh, nothing more I can add to this right now other than just looking at the reference photo and looking at where some of the uh, dark graphite is going to go and just kind of getting it started. Uh, this will evolve over time. But you have to start somewhere, and this is pretty much how I go about starting. Okay, now I'm going to use this uh, blending stump here, this little paper blending stump, and I'm just going to start uh, getting a little uh, blending action going here. I smooth out everything that uh, you know I've already added, and um, you know I find this is necessary for just about. Uh, every application that I put on the paper, whether it's uh, uh, graphite pencil or charcoal or whatever, I, I, I rarely, rarely just leave it in a raw state, but that I will uh, blend it in to kind of smooth it out uh, to give nice, uh, even transitions from uh, darker areas to uh, lighter areas. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, now it would be time for me to uh, start adding a little more graphite again. I'm going to the B pencil, the dark pencil. I'm just going to continue adding a little more to the darker areas of the hand.
And you'll notice that I'll pause and then I'll start up again. I'll pause and I'll start up again. And this is because I'm constantly looking at the reference photo to try to gauge where the dark and light areas happen to be. And now I'm going to go back to blending again. Just, you know, remember that your blending stub can be used just like your pencil for the most part in that you can draw with it as long as there is graphite still existing on the tip. And I will push graphite around and I will draw with this blending tip uh, almost as much as I'm drawing with pencil, it, it, would, it would seem like. And uh, I will just keep moving graphite around, looking at the reference, Keep drawing it again with the uh, blending stump and and then when it gets to a point where there's nothing else uh, that I can do with the blending stump, it needs to be reloaded. Uh, I'll just go back to uh, adding more uh, graphite with my pencil on the drawing itself. And then I'll take the blending stump and stump and start moving that graphite around again. And I'm going to keep doing this and I'm, and I'm going to keep looking at the reference and there's a lot of pausing when I'm drawing. Uh, there's no hurry to, to draw anything. Uh, there shouldn't be. You shouldn't rush it. And it should be an enjoyable experience. And the whole thing is, is you know, nothing is going to, you know, at least for me, um, I'm not going to be hitting all the exact spots. I'm not going to get the correct shades or any of that stuff initially. But as I add more of these darker areas or push it around, and so forth. And then I start to see, okay, I got a little too much here. I got uh, not enough there. And that's when I'll start to introduce my eraser and I will start making little corrections. I'll lighten this area. Then I'll maybe darken this area and so forth. And, and then it will start to uh, take shape. Uh, so don't expect things to start looking realistic initially. Uh, it's just going to have to take time, be patient, add a little, blend it, take a little off, blend it, so forth and so on. So here I'm looking at certain dark areas of my hand uh, up by the collar, or not the collar, but the cuff of my shirt. And so I'm just kind of noticing it at the moment. I thought, okay, I'll just go ahead and add a little bit of uh, darker graphite in that area there. I'm going to end up coming back to it, changing it, lightening it, blending it. So it's just a process.
Now the cotton swab is really useful for smoothing things out as well. Uh, I don't use it as much to push the um, graphite around, although you can use it that way, and, and I often uh, do as long as it, it will hold some of that uh, graphite. But for the most part, I like to use it to kind of really smooth the transitions from the dark areas to the light areas to kind of remove some of the uh, demarcations, which would be like, you know, uh, like a line or what would appear like a line. If you go straight from dark to light, uh, if you don't diffuse it just a little bit, uh, then sometimes it just looks a little harsh and a little artificial. And so I'll often smooth things out with the cotton swab. And then, you know, again, periodically stop, take some graphite off, put some graphite on. Now uh, that's the routine. Now here, around that line that I've drawn to separate a couple of fingers, um, I'm going to diffuse that line in time 
But right now I am just drawing and smoothing out the shadow areas between the fingers and then lightening it as I go outward to the top of my fingers where there's more light. And this gives the finger the appearance of being round and more 3D rather than just being a flat 2D drawing. And so I will develop this uh, over time uh, because the gap between the fingers obviously is going to be the darkest, right between the fingers where there's less light. But as you move away from that, then it's got to lighten up. And you look at the uh, reference photo and you'll notice that there's kind of a, a lighter area where the light's hitting it right there on the very top. And then it goes down darker into the gap between the fingers.
Okay, it's pretty much more of the same here. I'm putting in some dark areas and then I'm going to blend it and then continue to do the same. So I'm going to speed this part up. Okay, I had stepped away from my drawing for a while, but I've come back to it. And, uh, what I just showed was a uh, carbon pencil, and I'm going to uh, sharpen it and uh, use that to uh, perhaps darken some of the uh, dark areas. Uh, this was this was likely going to be around the hair area that I'm going to do that around my uh, my shirt um, cuff there. I can see that there is a section that is uh, needing to be darkened.
Now it's important to note here that as I draw in the dark areas and then I use the blender to continue that drawing out into the lighter areas, I give the fingers a more realistic 3D look. And you can see it start to develop as I'm working on the thumb there of my hand uh, and just going from the very, very dark zone where her hair comes down and my hand is there out into the light and then back down into a dark abyss again. And uh, you just keep adding a little more of that uh, graphite that I'm doing here with the 9XXB and looking at the reference photo and then blending it in and then continually to draw with that uh, blender because uh, it gives that nice overall smooth transition and you just keep working it and you start to see the uh, 3D photorealistic effect evolve. I should add that the angle that the camera is at pointing at the reference and the drawing, the drawing itself is actually closer to the camera than the reference photo, giving the illusion that I'm drawing the fingers a little bit bigger than the reference, but that's not the case. It's just that the drawing is closer to you than the reference is. Uh, trust me, they are the same size.
Now I'm going to start using a little bit of charcoal here for the dark areas and start blending with the charcoal and that's really going to give it more of that photorealistic look as I blend it with the graphite in the hand there. So you're going to watch me uh, use the uh, charcoal and then you're going to watch me use this tortillion uh, as I use it to then move that charcoal around and I'll be rounding out the fingers going from the dark up to the light areas and then just releasing the pressure as I'm blending. So I put a little more pressure there in the dark areas and then I'm going to move out into the light areas as you can see that's what I'm doing right here with her thumb and uh, I'm going to draw with that tortillion as much as I can and then I'm going to use that charcoal uh, to give me a little bit more to work with and um, just start working from there dark to light dark to light and blend 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 and I'm going to use this tortillion to help me uh, do it with fine detail because it has a nice sharp point to it just be careful not to press hard with a tortillion as you can damage the paper okay at this point now I'm going to speed it up because we have so much more to see here